Greetings, Commanders, and welcome back to the Deep Space Carrier series here in Elite Dangerous. We are going to be heading back to the carrier now. Uh, we've done our week's worth of exploration in this ship. So uh, we're going to go ahead, run back to the carrier. If we find anything along the way, cool. Otherwise, maybe we'll take the mining ship out again just to grab a couple more tons. I'm pretty sure we're good. I did, <clears throat> I did, a, I scheduled the, the next jump to see how many units of fuel it's going to be, and I'm confident that we're good, but you know, it doesn't hurt to go out and grab another couple tons. Uh, if we get lucky and find something along the way, we don't have time for that, then cool. But uh, it's only six jumps to get back to the carrier, and that's not really going to take that long. So uh, maybe we'll grab the mining ship and run out and go do that. But then again, we may end up having the next system just not load, so there's always that too. <laughs> Um, we are, if, if for those of you who are just joining us on this journey here, uh, we are on our way out to Colonia with our fleet carrier, her maiden voyage. And uh, because we have our fleet carrier, I bought a bunch of different ships with me that I want to, you know, that I like and I enjoy flying and I want to do. And this week we've been running with the Beluga. So actually, I don't even think I need, for six jumps, I don't think I need to do any fuel scooping either. Not, not, no serious fuel scooping anyway. Um, so, you know, we're... we're on our way back after having done some exploration with the with the beluga we are waiting for the mandalay to come out uh at which point we'll probably end up spending a significant amount of time in that ship for a while because supposedly it has some benefits that are going to make um even just not even if you just ignore the jump range which isn't really a, a problem for uh someone running around in a fleet carrier even if you ignore the jump range um, just the maneuverability and all that stuff that it's supposed to have, that we've been told that it's going to have, especially, um, you know, close to the surface and stuff like that. It sounds like it's going to be a much more maneuverable ship than most of the other options that we have out there. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to getting that. I'm looking forward to getting that uh, in our hangar, getting it, getting it equipped. Uh, I'm probably going to have to suck it up and buy the... I don't know. I'm going to have to do some looking around and see if the pre-engineered version is worth paying real money for because, you know, it's it's still money. It's still real money that I have to shell out for that. If I ha I'm pretty sure I have enough engineered equipment that I can just, you know, strip some gear off of something else and it'll be fine. So, I'm, I, you know, I'll, I'll make the decision as we get there because it's not a trivial... I don't think it's a trivial difference. It's like another... It's like another 10 bucks or something like that, I think, when you look at the, how, many, how many more arcs it takes to get it. So, uh, I, I don't know. Mm, I'm on the fence about which one I'm going to get, but I'm definitely going to get the early access because, you know, we're this is an exploration channel and you kind of have to do that. All right, you got you to get that stuff. You got to get in as early as you can to try to beat the competition. Um, so, oh, 14 bodies. We can do some scanning here. Uh, before we get too far into the video, as I always say, I would like to ask you to help us to reach our next major channel milestone of 10,000 subscribers. The number does not go up unless you actually press the subscribe button, so be sure to go ahead and do that right now before you forget. Then you can click the like button to help the video spread out to more people so that they can watch and perhaps become subscribers themselves. Uh, once you're done watching this video, I do have more than 1,700 other videos on the channel, all gaming stuff, all different kinds of games. It's organized into nice, neat little playlists to make it easy to find whatever it is that you want to watch. Bound to be something there for you because it's all different kinds of games. I play, I, I, I have an eclectic taste when it comes to gaming. Um, so yeah, right now we're doing some scanning in this system. Doesn't look like, I mean, yeah, there might be one or two high metal content worlds. It'd be really nice if we could find a uh, first footfall stratum tectonicus, but nope, that ain't happening. Uh, maybe we'll find some high diversity rock body. Nope, looks like... Uh, Looks like there's nothing in this system, so <clears throat> off we go to the next one. I, <clears throat> I've been saying all week, I am a big fan of the Beluga uh, as a concept. Their implementation of it, eh, not so much. <laughs> I see the potential that this ship has if they would just tweak a few things. Um, and, you know, the, the high-level summary is... is if they would give it a much bigger fuel scoop, give it a better FSD so that the jump range could go up by at least 10 to compete with at least the Orca. Like, if I, if I could get the same jump range out of this, fully equipped as I can get with the Orca, um, I would already be much closer to wanting to use this ship as my primary thing. And then the, 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 last, the last really big thing that I would like to see is for them to add an update that allows fighters to land. Landing gears for the fighters. 
because then my style of exploration would be so much more fun because I could use my beluga as a mothership and have my fighter as my go down to the planet and do, or even just, you know, even if we take the beluga down into the atmosphere, let it just sit there and hover for a while while I fly around looking for biological signatures in my fighter. Like that would be, that would be really cool. Uh, only two bodies in this one, so unfortunately we're not going to really do much. Because, uh, you know, trying to land this thing on the ground all the time is just, it's a big pain. Like, even medium ships can be a pain uh, on some of the terrain, so uh, doing a large ship like this is not really practical from an exploration standpoint. I don't know, I don't know how, well, I mean, I guess I do. Uh, I, don't, I was going to say, I don't know how Anaconda guys do it. But they, I would imagine most of them rely very heavily on their SRVs and they probably enjoy that process. I'm, I don't really care about the SRV. It's not really something I worry, it's not something I enjoy driving around. It's kind of a hindrance uh, to the way that I do exploration. So, uh, you know, if, if I was gonna do the Beluga, obviously I think the SRV would probably be more of a feature, but I really don't like the slow pace of driving around on the ground in the, in the SRV. I'd much rather skim the surface in my ship and look for things on the ground and then land and grab it. That's that's just the way I do it. Um, so yeah, if we could if we could get to where the fighters could do, it, it, even if all they did was make it so that the fighters could land, even if they didn't do anything to the Beluga and they just made it, if they just changed the fighters to make it so that they could land, I'd be pretty close to wanting to do that. But I'd be pretty close to making this my primary my primary and only ship. Because <laughs> I just, I don't know, I really like the Beluga. I like the way it looks. I like the way it flies. It flies very well. It's got it's got excellent turn rates and things like that for, for a ship of its size. And, uh, yeah, I, I, think it, I think it's a very pretty ship. And just the massive size of it is insane to me. Like, it's it's big. It's massive. I think, I, I think it is the biggest ship in the game. I think. Ooh, okay. Five biology. That's cool. It's very nice. What do we have going on here? <clears throat> we got some icy bodies. It looks like we'll finish scanning the system, but that was a uh, that was a lot of that was a lot of biology on, on that planet. So I'd still rather find. I mean, I guess we're especially if we get first footfall. All these different things we're about to find on this body, <clears throat> we'll probably get the 90 million that we would normally get from just a stratum tectonicus first footfall by itself. But it's always nice when you can just get it. It's, it's always nice when you can just get it kind of easy and not have to go, you know, skimming around to a bunch of different bodies. I am kind of looking forward to getting out of this ship though because I did not do the super. Well, honestly, I was gonna say because I, I did not do the super cruise overdrive and it makes it, it means we can't boost super cruise boost towards the bodies here. But at the same time, I'm like, it's probably a good idea to not have the super cruise overdrive on this ship with the heat management issues that it has because. I would imagine we'd get about two seconds before it's starting to take heat damage. <laughs> you know, like they, they need a serious rework with the with whatever. You know, I don't even really know. I don't even I don't know enough about the mechanics of everything. I, I should I should know. I've been playing this game long enough that I should know, but I don't really know the mechanics of where the heat where the heat management comes from. I think it's the power plant because um, I I believe there's some mods you can put on the power plant to make it run cooler. Um, and I would imagine I, well, no, I, what did I put on my power plant? So let's see here. We have, we have, where's my power plant? So my power distributor, charge enhanced. Okay. Where's my power plant? <clears throat> Overcharged, which allowed me to get more, oop, oop, oop. Which allowed me to get more... Oops. Well, that was stupid. Um, let's see here. I did one there. One there. One there. I think that'll work. <laughs> I, I usually do one, two, three, four, but then I... I accidentally pressed the right mouse button when I did that. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Um, stratum on this is just going to be the the lower quality stratum, so I'm not going to focus on that. We may go after the fungoida because it seems like all of this stuff. Oh, I don't know. Um, I actually I think because I can't. There's no real way to know exactly where the overlap's going to be. 
I think I may go after the Tussock. That's actually kind of weird. Just with the way that the heat map's working out right now, I'm thinking that focusing on the Tussock... Uh, tussock and the Fungoida overlap right around in this area here. So Fungoida and then the Frutexa and Tussock kind of overlap there. So I'm going to focus on the Tussock, and then we're going to head up at our 12 o'clock right here. And then hopefully we can... Oops. It's the only thing I don't like. I, I, it would be, it would be nice if they introduce an option for the super cruise assist to, to take away the automatic orbit. Just keep me pointed towards the planet, and then that's. It. I mean, I don't know. I guess it's kind of a nice reminder to, hey, dummy, turn off the super cruise assist before you run into the planet. But I don't know. It's just annoying when it starts flinging you off in another direction. Okay, so yeah, we want to be right into this area here. And then we're looking for Tussock, Frutexa, Fungoida, Stratum. This is the kind of stuff that we're looking for. So fortunately, you know, we found this nice, uh, we found this nice body here. We can hopefully grab a few samples, and then uh, depending on how long it takes, maybe we can finish our run back to the carrier. But realistically, I'll probably end up having to do that on my own because you know, doing three or four samples can take. A little bit of time depending on how bad the terrain is and how far apart they are and all that kind of stuff so oh yeah so this is what I'm talking about this right here is why you don't want to take a large ship because trying to land any anywhere in this is just virtually impossible for this so yeah like I don't I don't even think I'm going to bother. Like, look how there's nowhere for me to land here. So as much as I would love to go do that, I just there's just nowhere for me to land. Yeah, there's nowhere for me to land here. Let's go ahead and get started on uh, heading towards the next thing. Then we only have oh yeah, and the next jump is our fleet carrier. So. It would have been nice to go get some more get some more money before we head out of here, but I don't really need it. We have tons of money at this point. We have way more money than I could spend in, a, in any short amount of time, um, even with 33 million a week of fleet carrier up maintenance. But uh, yeah, just it's just it's not worth the frustration of trying to. It would take forever. Just every every time we try to land and, and ship this, but even the even a small ship. Even one of the small ships would have a difficult time landing on terrain like that. So trying to take it down with this massive behemoth of a ship is just, it's not reasonable. It's just not reasonable to do. So yeah, we'll go ahead, head back to the carrier. Uh, we'll sell off what data we have. And then uh, maybe we'll head out to the, maybe we'll head out to the tritium hotspot over here in our mining ship. And, you know, mine for a little bit and let you guys, we'll, 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 we'll have started the week with mining and end off the week with mining. It's not, it's not a terrible way to go. Just kind of depends on how long it takes us to finish up here, get everything sold off, swap out our ships. Not really sure which, uh, not really sure which ship we're going to take next week. We've more or less gone through, well, well, I think we'll take the Sidewinder out next week because we haven't done the Sidewinder yet. <laughs> got to go do exploring in the Sidewinder. That's just, you got to do it. You got to do it. So yeah, I think we're probably going to take the Sidewinder out next week. We haven't taken we haven't taken the Cobra either. So maybe we'll do a maybe we'll do a back to basics uh, back to back to basics kind of thing the next couple of weeks. We'll take the Sidewinder out, then we'll take the Cobra out the week after that. And uh, you know, because those are the first two ships most people start with. Uh, you start off with the Sidewinder, and then you're like, "Ooh, I want that Cobra. I want that Cobra." So I think that that might be what we end up doing. But for now, we need to get this thing we need to get this thing chucked back into the carrier. Uh, strip off any parts that I don't need to keep on it. I think the only thing we had to switch out for this one, though, was the surface scanner, because I, again, we left the carrier without one and <laughs> had to come back. Uh, I forgot to do my uh, rapid approach for the super cruise assist, so we wasted a bunch of time there doing that. So it's close enough, the seven and a half kilometers, to do our docking request. Oh seven, Commander. Docking permission requests are mandatory prior to landing. 
Permission granted. She say, did she did she just say 07 commander? <laughs> I didn't remember I don't remember them ever saying that to me. All right. We had to remove our auto dock computer for this. So I am going to be a little bit careful because this thing is from my experience this thing is by far the most maneuverable of the large ships, but it's still it's still big and has a lot of mass and just wants to fling all over the place. Okay, come on. Or at least, I don't know, the turn radius, the, the turning, the, the, the turn rate on this thing is the best of the ships, of the large ships that I've flown, but not necessarily the... It, it's still big and heavy and it drifts. All right, so we want to... All right, so first thing we want to do... Maybe we won't get to mining today because we need to take a minute to make sure that... We don't leave anything on here that we don't want to leave on here, and I need to make sure I take off my really good, um, I need to make sure I take off my really good surface scanner, because I keep swapping that around to all the, to each of the ships that I'm on, so. <clears throat> I have a couple of dedicated exploration ships that are fully outfitted that I don't have to do anything with. My Phantom and my Asp Explorer, I believe, are the ones that have, like, uh, permanent equipment that I don't have to do anything with, but for this one, I definitely need to make sure that I, uh, I definitely need to make sure I, I'm going to put the the um, auto dock computer back on it again. And then now we have that stored back where it goes. This ship has a couple of... This ship is fully equipped for, uh, you know, heading out into deep space. Fuel scoop. I put passenger cabins on it just because, you know, that we're simulating being a luxury ship heading out into deep space. But for the most part, this thing is equipped for going out and doing long-range exploration. Um... And it would be really cool if I got some updates that made it more feasible. Because, as I've said in previous episodes and in my Discord, uh, if they made changes that made uh, the Beluga sort of like a mini carrier, or if they made you know if they made it to where large carrier fight carrier or fighter carrying ships could be <clears throat> could have fighters that land, <laughs> there would be a lot more options for large uh, deep space exploration platforms, and I think that would be really cool. Um, so the only reason we have a carrier is because I wanted to be able to fly small ships uh, around the surface and all that stuff when I felt like it. Uh, but yeah, it is what it is. All right, we've done enough of that. So yeah, I think. Well, I'm. I know we have enough fuel to get to to get through our next thing. So I think what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hop into our sidewinder here. <clears throat> we'll take a second and make sure that it is fully outfitted and ready to go because I I don't want to do something stupid and then end up forgetting. All right, this one does have the, this one has full on, oh, it doesn't have any, we didn't, we weren't able to engineer any of this. Uh, may have to take a look at that. Uh, so we're going to want to make sure we have the biggest fuel scoop we can put on it. And we're going to want to make sure we have the FSD booster, I think. Where's my FSD booster? So we want to put the FSD booster on it. Just get a few more light years. 30, 30 light years isn't bad. And then, are we able to put a class one shield on here? Do we have any class? Is there? Is there? Yeah. Okay, we have the bi-weave shield generator that we can put on here, so that gives us a little bit of protection. And then, uh, let's see. I guess. Oh yeah, we don't have any room for that. Oh yeah, we need to make sure we have the surface scanner on there. Does this have a? Super Cruise Assist, yeah, so we just need to make sure we put our uh, surface scanner on there. I already, already almost forgot to put that on there. All right, 27.4%. So this will be the ship that we take out next week after our weekly carrier reposition live stream this Sunday at 6 p.m. Pacific. We do it every week. Uh, so yeah, we're good there. Let's, uh, since it's reminding me about that now, let's go ahead, discovery scanner and the surface scanner. And now we can disembark, go sell off any data we may have found. It should be very, very light on funds this week because we didn't really find anything. I mean, it's entirely... Oh, I forgot to sell my... <clears throat> I forgot to sell off my uh, Universal Cartographics data, but that's fine. It's usually not... <clears throat> it's a drop in the bucket compared to what we get out of exobiology. I'm not overly concerned about it. So, yeah, we don't, we don't really have time to go mining... Um, by the time we got the ship all out and set up and head over there, we're going to be at the end of an episode anyway. So we'll just go ahead. We'll sell off our stuff here. And then uh, you know, I'll see you guys on Sunday. So we got 14 million-ish 
plus whatever first fo footfall bonus. So yeah, we got, I mean, we got, uh, you know, two or three weeks of, of carrier, of Anything carrier to rental, basic rental fees, basically out of that. So not too shabby. So anyways, hopefully you guys had lots of fun. Be sure to click the like button if you did. So the YouTube algorithm knows and send the video out to more people. Subscribe to help us reach 10,000 subscribers so that, uh, you know, we reach that next major channel milestone. You can join as a member for early access to videos, among other perks, or you can just leave YouTube's version of a tip with the thanks button. So again, thank you very much for your time. Hope you guys enjoyed flying with us this week. Be sure to come back for our weekly live stream on Sunday. And then uh, next week as we go exploring around the galaxy in our Sidewinder. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.